Well, hello everyone. Welcome to round 19 of season 3 of my F1 2012 career mode. I am Love Spuds, and today we need to finish first. Uh, well, putting it bluntly, I could actually win the driver's title here. All I have to do is secure one or two points more than my nearest rivals, and then the title is mine, as I have a 24 point lead in championship ahead of Rosberg. The challenge from Grosjean has um, ebbed away quite a bit. Rosberg has made a late charge. And so yeah, it could all be wrapped up here. And to be honest, this is kind of one of my better tracks to drive in terms of getting a good result. Last year, unfortunately, or last season, was unfortunately a pile of crap because for some reason the game decided it would give me no grip on my tyres and I left it a bit too long to come into the pits change my tyres and then go on to um, do something in the race because I basically retired so I did because I had literally no grip it was even worse than I think a couple of races ago this season I don't know I, I think it was in Singapore wasn't it but anyway this time around things are a lot better so rest assured you're actually going to get a full length race although admittedly not much happens I don't think I, <laughs> I actually don't know because I obviously this is post commentary and my memory is not very good at the moment because <laughs> uh, I recorded this over two weeks ago so not not good at all but here's my qualifying lap and it has actually put me on pole for now. Let's see if it actually keeps me there. I think it does actually. It's my second lap because my first lap wasn't really brilliant. So yes, six tenths, six tenths faster than Kimi Raikkonen. Let's see where Rosberg is. Rosberg starts tenth, so he's not. <laughs> he's not in a great position. So let's see what I can do. I usually mess up this first corner because it's so blind, it's unreal. And I still haven't worked out the breaking point for it. Well, not from the start finish line anyway, at least. As I break way too early. <laughs> and that's what happens. And chaos ensues behind me. Now, I don't know quite what happened behind me because I didn't really see much on the replay either, I don't think. I'll have to relook at that when I make my montage. I really need to get onto that as well because. I am kind of struggling to find a song that I actually like at the moment. So it's just going to have to be some sort of another epic or orchestral piece or a movie soundtrack or something that I found rather nice. I don't know, but time is ticking and I've only got two rounds left to do it in. But I don't know, should be alright. I've got a few days off now, so I should be able to do something. There might not be too many videos coming from now until next Wednesday because A it's my birthday on Saturday and I might be doing other, th other things and two my parents are in the area for the next five days as well so I might be out and about doing things with them I don't even know yet I haven't even made plans or anything so don't be surprised that um, this current streak of regular uploads uh, stops for a, a little while again but it won't be as long I need to get on with season 4 as well because I don't have long left and the reason for that will be coming up shortly in an update video at the end of next month so there we go so after the first lap I was going to say the second lap we haven't got that far just yet I'm out in the lead, Raikkonen is in second, Maldonado is in third, and Grosjean in fourth. So I've actually built up a bit of a gap now. Uh, I've already escaped the DRS zone, sort of Vettel-esque in my uh, start to this race, but let's see if I can keep it up. Past form says no, because I'm already back in the DRS zone. But I've still got another lap to... Well, I've got half a lap to change that. I'm not really a fan of the first sector. I find it a bit, bit dodgy, but it is actually quite fun when you get the line perfectly right. 
it's a great feeling because you can lose so much time in that sector it's unreal and that's what happened on my first qualifying lap which is why I had to go ahead and do a second one because I knew I could get that pole position so um, wasn't going to be happy with anything lower than at first let's see if I can win this race and if I do win this race it'll be a guaranteed championship win still locking up my tyres every so often though it's um, at least proof that I'm not using ABS I suppose <laughs> more than anything but yeah nothing much is happening at the moment so let's see if there's any news to talk about well well, one big thing is Vettel has extended his Red Bull contract to the end of 2015. <clears throat> That's not really a surprise. Why would you leave a championship winning team? So, you know, it's not not really a surprise. I expect he's eyeing up some, at least three more championships or so. Wouldn't be surprised. Um... The real, real question is, if these rumours about Adrian Newey leaving at the end of 2014 are true. Now, I, I've heard him sort of floating around in the background, and there's no real concrete evidence of it so far, but if he did leave at the 20, end of 2014, would that mean Red Bull would suddenly slide back to where they were in the midfield? I mean, I suppose they would keep up some sort of momentum. I mean, they're not, they're not stupid because yeah, um, there have been links to James Allison who I think was at Lotus until very recently that he might work under Newey for 2014 and then take over but apparently those rumours have been denied by Red Bull outright so I don't know unless that's covering their tracks or they're just um, unless it's genuinely not, genuinely not true I don't know but we'll see what happens in that case in years to come. Especially with the new regulations coming into force next year. Should be interesting enough to well see where Red Bull are actually going to end up. Anyway. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Because, um, you know, <laughs> new turbo engines. Um... Yeah, all the other bits of bodywork that changes, that's changing. Uh, I don't know exactly what's changing in terms of the bodywork, but I think that the front wing is going to be shortened, so it's not as wide as it is now. So it can maybe um, prevent the whole people getting punctures by just clipping people's front wings sort of scenario. But apart from that, I don't know much else, to be honest. I have to admit, I haven't really bred up on much this week in terms of Formula 1. Most of this information I get on the fly while recording this. That's what I'm doing right now. Uh, gossip and rumours. Apparently Thailand's going to be on the Formula 1 calendar in 2015 if it uh, all goes well. Which uh, yeah, is fine, but I'm not really a fan of street races. Because I believe it's in the, in the city of Phuket. Yeah, that's what it says here. Uh, also in other news, a combination of the Germans' continued dominance and a lack of a British challenge appears to be hitting British Grand Prix ticket sales. Now, I was quite surprised about this with the, with the stupid bloody warn, warn, cut, corner cutting warning. Um, you know, because usually at the British Grand Prix, when I look at tickets around this time of year, well, obviously at this time of year, it's, it's in a couple of weeks, isn't it? But usually these tickets tend to sell out pretty quickly, and, um, and strangely enough, there's still tickets available. Now, I think that's probably down to Jensen not doing well. Hamilton not not looking that he's gonna like he's gonna win. Chilton's not obviously gonna win it unless all the cars on the grid decide to crash. Um Duresta might get on the podium. I'd be very surprised if he won it. 
So, um, yeah, I can get what the fans are thinking there, but yeah, personally, I'm not the sort of person who thinks like that. I would go there anyway, just to see them in action. I mean, it doesn't, you know, obviously I'd want them to win. Who, you know, as a as a Brit, of course I do. But, you know, I'd be there for the spectacle, the racing, the whole package, not just to see a British driver win. Yeah, you, I mean, you do get this in a lot of sports, though. You do get the uh, the people who only go to Grand Prix if they can see if someone they're going to win, someone they like is going to win. But, also on the flip side, people are probably, you know, one, well, not wondering what they're getting for their money, but with money being tight right now, um, why would they spend hundreds of pounds that, on a Grand Prix ticket when you can go abroad? You can literally go abroad, go to a different race, and it would still be cheaper than getting a weekend ticket for the British Grand Prix. I mean, it's absolutely ludicrous, but it is one of the most popular venues on the calendar because of its history and you know the the reputation of the British fans um, being so enthusiastic, which doesn't seem to be the case this year. But yeah, it's just surprising that. Um, <laughs> that there, uh, there's still tickets available, but you never know. Oh well, might get sold out by t t by next week. Who knows? Um, yeah, just um, for those wondering why I looked back earlier, earlier in the lap and start finish straight, Raikkonen actually spun on the last corner behind me. I did wonder if he hit me, but I didn't feel anything, so. That was his own mistake, so I've actually been given a little bit of a breathing space here, four seconds, which he'll probably eat into. But I am actually coming to the pits this lap, so it doesn't particularly matter too much. Um, and, you know, having things as I stand at the moment, I'm going to win a championship, which is really making me quite happy at the moment <laughs> while I'm driving. Uh, this is the best time ever to be capturing my form again. You know, having the last race, the win in Abu Dhabi, and now looking at me winning this race so far. Um, just at the right time. It's a good job Grosjean had a bit, few bits of misfortune in the other races that I was in with him. Because otherwise it probably would have been a cl more close run thing. I might have even lost, who knows. But it's just a shame that I cannot win the Constructors' Championship. I really hope I can win it next year, because otherwise I'm not going to be a happy bunny. Right, so I've got Rosberg behind me. So that's good news. So he has yet to come into the pits, I think. I think. Don't quote me on that, but... Um, but he's going to be dropping back anyway. Even if these positions stayed as they were, I would probably still win. If I can remember what the point system is again. <laughs> oh well. Halfway through this race, still a bit of wait, time to go. Um, what else can we look at though? Just using up the rest of my curtains here to be uh, on the defensive. Strangely enough, Massa's actually uh, up here with me as well. I assume he's coming in this lap, but I'd really want him. I really want him to at least score more than one point this season. Because that is truly and utterly pathetic. At least in the real world 2012 season, he actually improved his form at the end of it. This one, he doesn't seem to be doing naff all. Which is very unfortunate. I think um, if this decision, in hindsight, if this decision came up again to join Ferrari, then I would take Massa's seat, to be honest. Because Alonso in this game is, you know, obviously programmed to be far, far superior than Massa. But again, that can change. The game can change its mind on you, especially in the career mode. Especially when they've made Red Bull a midfield team. 
Uh, it's all a bit crazy, but still. Uh, still, I've completely forgotten what I'm talking about. <laughs> God damn. My driving was just distracting me there. Yeah, as I say, I'd take Massa's seat because at least then in Alonso on this game, I would have a teammate that could be up there with me in the points. So, I think that was a bit of a mistake, but I didn't exactly have too much of a choice who I could challenge last year. Um, unfortunately, you can't just challenge anyone. I think it, it locks out a certain number of places in the championship. Um, like, two or three places above and two or three places below. So it kind of depends on who you're with at the time, at that point in the season. So as to who you pick as your rival. There's six seconds between you and the car behind. Keep pushing. So... Yeah, unfortunately, if you are if you ended up in amongst a load of um, teams that you actually really do not want to challenge, then you're stuffed. You just have to wait for a contract officer to come through. But me being me, I'm quite lucky in the fact that I actually had access to a contract for a, you know, one of the top teams. And hopefully I'll get some decent contracts by the end of this season as well because I usually tend to wait to the end of the season before picking a team so you know all the other ones that, all the other contract offers that come in during the season are mostly timed up until like the, you know India or Japan or something like that but they're usually the, the lower end teams the midfield teams But, um, yeah. Hopefully I'll get some more decent offers, because at the moment I have that contract offer from Lotus for Roman Grosjean's seat. That'd be awesome to be teamed up with Raikkonen next season. That would be, that'd be very interesting. But of course, if McLaren come calling, then that's where I'll probably be going. But they haven't yet, so... I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be a possibility. Um, I ha also have a contract renewal with Ferrari, which I don't know if it was for the first or second driver. I have no idea. I've heard rumours before that when you're with a, when you're in a number one seat, that the, if you stay with them for the next season, you end up getting moved to the number two seat. Uh, honestly, I can't remember because I didn't look. <laughs> at what the contract offer was for but I have heard that happen to some people before so who knows and that would bring Alonso back into the mix and then I might have a chance at winning the title the constructors title but seeing as Ferrari finished fourth in the constructors table the car might not be as good so I don't know it's a bit of a tough one I mean seeing as Lotus have pretty much won the constructors this season. I'm not quite sure if they have yet, to be honest. I think Mercedes are quite close to them. Ooh, bit of a sliding action going on there. I don't know. I don't know. Interesting times. But obviously, uh, I, yeah, I just don't know what I'm going to do yet. Well, I kind of do because <laughs> I've finished this season. That's all I've done so far. I haven't started season four yet, so I still have to pick a team, which I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna reveal who I'm with, to be honest. I think most of you'll probably work it out, but it's just nice to reveal the surprise when the season starts again. Hopefully I can make it three titles in a row. Become a triple world champion. That would be absolutely freaking sweet. Especially with three different teams as well. Again with the bloody corner cutting. I, well, I really hope that's something they fix as well in 2013. Because that is a ridiculous place to say you're corner cutting. I mean, I can understand if you're going very, very wide. But I'm only 
putting like a wheel off the track. I'm still within the track limits technically. So I don't know what the problem is with that. Come on, I'll get around this corner properly. These corners. I seem to be doing alright. Apart from that corner where I went extremely wide, I just didn't have I had a complete lack of uh, loss of grip there, shall I say. Unfortunately, when you go too fast around some of those corners, you just end up sliding, especially if you go down too fast. Because my car's not exactly downforce heavy for a start. But uh, the setup is working rather nicely, which is quite nice to see don't have any particular acceleration problems because I've sorted out the gearbox it seems. I think I had the gearbox geared too high on some of the races before when I had bad results but it seems to have worked out a nice little compromise. We got Raikkonen about 3.6 seconds behind. It seems to be a bit of a constant now so at least I'm keeping up the pace a little bit. Didn't quite see who set the fastest lap last, but I'm sure I'll find out in a minute. Lap is 134, 35. Ooh, let's see what happens when I get across the line. It's not going to be the fastest lap. Well, not my fastest lap anyway. Uh, okay, 141.8. The gap is literally remained the same to Raikkonen. So. Don't have to worry about that. Perez is up to fourth. That's pretty good. And Grosjean set fast lap. So 141.6 to my 141.8. But my pace is half a second quicker this time around. Let's see if I can keep that up. Schumacher, the 41.5. Just going around with this hairpin now. Hopefully I don't cut that corner, so that would ruin my fastest lap if I had one. Had a long, long straight, just uh, just touching 200 miles an hour. Uh, with the DRS open, I should add. At 190 miles an hour without DRS. So not too much of a speed difference. 1.1, uh, 1.7 seconds up in pace. I think it's going to be a fastest lap. Looks like it so far. I think that pace may have been from my last lap. So I don't, don't think it's going to be like two seconds up on best time so far. I mean, that's, that's, that would be a bit mental. Let's see where we are. 33, 34, 35. Definitely ahead of where we were last time round. Go for the line. It's a 149. That will be the fastest lap. Unless someone else beats it. I uh, shouldn't think so because I've increased my gap to Raikkonen to 4.5 seconds. Hopefully I can hold on to that fastest lap. I haven't had a fastest lap for a while. Can't remember if I had one in Abu Dhabi. I'm not entirely sure. Wouldn't surprise me if I didn't. But I'm not really one for getting fastest laps, so that would be an achievement. Four point six seconds to Raikkonen, so that's safe as houses. On the penultimate lap now, so just need to go that little bit further. Not far off now, being a double world champion. It's gonna feel freaking sweet. You know, you know it. As long as I don't mess it up now. See that the sky's quite dark. I did kind of worry that it was going to start spitting with rain. Because you never know this game. You really don't. The hey ho. Uh, well, while I've got a moment, I should mention that um, if you're if you're on Twitter and you're bothered about following me, which I wouldn't be, because <laughs> I hardly use it, 
but you can follow me on Twitter. Um, it's at Mr. Newbury. Uh, you can follow the link at my channel page. It's up to you whether you follow me on Twitter or not. It just keeps you up to date of when I post videos mainly. And occasionally I go on there and write something random. <laughs> mainly to my friends who are in Canada at the moment. So I tend to call them weird things. Um, so I got back on a Twitter bandwagon recently anyway. Just because I thought I should use it more. So if you're bothered about that, just go and check out my main channel page and there should be a link there somewhere on the new YouTube One banner bullshit thing. Uh, not really a fan of social media in general, but it comes in really handy. So... Last lap, hey? Eh? Just gotta make it through these corners safely. With a nice, comfortable 4.3 second gap, I completely dominate the race all the way through, pretty much. Wasn't any under any particular threat. And I'm just gonna take these last couple of corners and savor the moment in being a double world champion yeah boys I done it a bloody championship with Ferrari oh that's brilliant such a fantastic feeling you know to do twenty to do a 20 race season over a period of a few weeks and then be the champion at the end of it is great so job. great, great. Job. What a win. congratulations 25 points. 25 points and my rival Nico Rosberg pretty much is nowhere near He's down there in 7th and Felipe bloody Massa in 11th one place off getting a second point this season that is really disgusting but uh, yeah there we go there's the results Perez finish fourth, so the two Lotuses join me on the podium. Oh yeah, 35 point lead going into the final round. Can't get much better than that. We can, but not in this season. <laughs> so, Grosjean is in second there. Nico Rosberg could still take second away from Grosjean, you never know. And the two Caterhams finishing ahead of Massa pretty much unless Massa absolutely blitzes in Brazil I don't think that's gonna change Maldonado finishing ahead of Vettel it's interesting why do I keep saying finishing there's still one race to go but Lotus have definitely taken the Constructors Championship this time around Mercedes looking like they're gonna finish in second but McLaren could challenge that Ferrari definitely finishing in fourth. Uh, they can't be beaten or overtake McLaren. And here's my championship winning sequence film cutscene thing. Look at me. I'm so happy. I am so happy. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Let's just savor that. So, yeah, join me next time for the final round of Season 3 in Brazil. I'll see you then.